Um, welcome to lesson 10.5. This is Miss Fleming, and this lesson is nonlinear systems and inequalities. We're going to revisit a couple of things we've done with systems of linear functions, and we're going to expand that to be things that are obviously nonlinear. All right, coming up first, though, is something completely out of left field. We are going to solve equations with the calculator. These are one variable equations, so let's take a look here. All right, when we did systems of equations, we had four methods for solving. And all of those involved finding a point of intersection where two lines met. The methods we used were by graphing, which we're going to revisit today. We also did um, elimination, substitution, and we did this called equal values. So this equal values is the same thing. It's the exact same concept. And it says that if two equations are equal to the same value, then they are equal to each other. And what we did back in Chapter 4 is if we had two equations that were solved for y, then we could say since they're both solved to y, then they're equal to each other. So for example, if I had two linear equations and they were in slope-intercept form, which is the only form that will work because that's obviously solved for y. So let's say I had one that said 2x minus 3, and the other one said y is equal to negative 4x plus 8. What we're extending this concept to today says, okay, well, since they are both equal to y, then whatever the value y is makes them equal to each other. So I can say then that 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 4x plus 8. And the nice thing about that, second lunge, blue diamond. going back to chapter 4, was now instead of having two values, but or variables, both an x and a y, I only had one. And I could solve for x, and I could go plug in and find y. Okay, that's a long explanation of where we're going. So that's what we learned back in chapter 4. Now, to solve just a regular one variable equation, we're going to say we have the same concept working the other way. Here's my one variable equation ax plus b is equal to cx minus d. Okay, that's a lot of variables. We did literal equation reviews already. So if I want to get the x's together, I'm going to add a, or add, subtract this one and get it over at that. Then I'm going to get everything that doesn't have an x by subtracting that b and putting it over there. But I'm not going to worry about that. That's not the concept. We're going to do this backwards. So if ax plus b was equal to cx minus d, and that's all this says right here, then I can rewrite these. I can say that this piece is equal to y, and this piece is equal to y. That's what I've got up here. Now, why would I care about that? Because anything that has a y equal, let's do this in red so that it's really important. Any, well, that's close to red. It's blue. Anything that starts with y equal, I can put in the calculator. And if I have these both in the calculator, and we're going to do this in a minute, then I can find the point of intersection, and that is going to solve the problem for me. So let's see how powerful this is. Here's my first example. Solve the equation by graphing. The solution is just going to be the x value. These are one variable equations. You're going to see that. And so we're going to find the point of intersection and just take the x value. So here is an equation that has one variable. I've got a negative on the outside that I would normally have to distribute in here, and I'd normally have to distribute that 6. And after I did both of those distributed properties, then I would add or subtract to get x's all together on one side, and I would add or subtract to get everything that didn't have an x on the other side. And the last step would be to divide by the coefficient that I ended up for x. So lots of steps there. All right, equal value sets. They are equal to each other, so therefore, I can make them both equal to y. So we're going to put this equation at y sub 1, and we're going to put this equation at y sub 2. So let me bring up the calculator, and we're going to do exactly that. All right, going to y equal. Okay, negative, and that's a negative sign. And I've got 3x minus 15. Close that. Now I'm going to put the other one in y sub 2, 
and it's 6 times 2x plus 5. Whoops, I've got to put parentheses around it. That's not going to work. All right, so now I'm going to graph this. Okay, I've got all of the commands over here. If I need to zoom, and I've got the normal size window I go back to is zoom 6 standard. If I'm going to zoom out, I do zoom fit first, and then I'm going to zoom out as many times as I want to. And I find the point of intersection doing second trace. Now, I'm not looking for x-intercepts, so I don't need a 0 at y sub 2. But somewhere up here, these graphs are going to intersect. So let's go ahead and look for them. So I'm going to zoom, zoom fit first. And there it is. I don't even have to do anything else. So right here, I'm going to do a second trace. And I want the point of intersection, which is option 5. And do not use the up or down keys, just left or right. I'm almost there. Move over a couple, and you're familiar with this. First curve, second curve, yes. And that says the point of intersection for these lines is negative 1 and 18. Okay, well, I'm solving for x. The only one I want is the x value. So there's the point. The point of intersection is negative 1 and 18. The solution for this one variable equation is that x is equal to negative 1. All right, let's try it one more time. This time I've got something a little more complicated, but it's still linear. Negative 1 half x plus 2 is equal to 2 fifths. Okay, well, it's one variable as far as you're concerned. So y sub 1 is going to get this. y sub 2 is going to get this because that's where the equal sign is. So we said this part is equal to 1 or y, and this part is equal to y. So let's go back to y equal and clear this out. Okay, I've got, let's clear both of them. All right, I've got a fraction there, so I'm going to use a stack fraction, which is alpha y equal and option one. So I've got a negative one half. Get out from under there. Don't put your x down there with a two, plus two. And then dropping down, y sub 2, I just want that fraction of 2 fifths. So I'm going to have a horizontal line. Hopefully some of you recognize that at this point. Alpha y equal again, and option number 1, 2, 5. Okay, I'm going to graph this. Right now, this is where it was set for the last one. So let's go back and zoom and put it back to normal size first, which is always a good idea. And if you looked really close, that's where those lines intersect because we have a horizontal line that is not all the way up to 1. So let's go ahead and look for it. Um, we're going to do second trace, and number 5 is intersect. Okay, my cursor's up there. I'm going to use the arrow key to go over there. And I'm figuring the intersection's right there somewhere, and it will calibrate and find it for me anyway. All right, I've got a point of intersection at 3.2 and 2 fifths. Interesting. All right, I don't care what the y is, but I when I went ahead and um, converted that to a decimal, it was 0.4, but I don't care about that anyway. I care about this 3.2. Well, let's suppose that I got on the state test, and it only gives me fractions. So I need to convert that decimal into a fraction. So let's go do that. We're going to get out of this, so second quit. And I'm going to do 3.2 and enter. And now I'm going to go to math. And I have a decimal. I want a fraction. So I'm going to select option one. And there's the 16 fifths. So obviously, we're getting close to the state test. And we're giving you as much functions, or as reminding you of as much functionality as we can from this calculator. All right, when you get into the practice, I think the first six problems in the practice are doing this. So you don't have a system. You are looking for a point of intersection, but it is a single equation, and you are using the calculator to solve for x. All right, now we're going to get into systems. So these are nonlinear, so let me scroll. Okay. All right, systems means I've got... 
two or more equations. We're not going to do more than two. <clears throat> and this time, in the past, in Chapter 4, we were just doing linear systems. So this is my coordinate plane I have a hard time drawing. And let's see if it'll let me go to a row this time. All right, so I had this possibility. I had um, lines that intersected at one point, and that's the point of intersection, and that was a solution to the system. It was an ordered pair. Or I had lines that This time you get to have red, so I don't have to change it again since I am not good at that. Okay, this time the graph's going to be black. So we have one answer, one solution, which was a single point of intersection. These are parallel lines. They have the same slope. They are never going to intersect, so that was no solutions. And then we had the idea that the lines overlapped. And... In which case, let's say that these, ignore the other one. These lines overlap. They're essentially the same line. They have the same slope. They have the same y-intercept. These were called coinciding lines, and these have infinitely many solutions. All right, this is what we're, it's going to look like when we start doing things that are nonlinear. We're still looking for the point of intersections, but this time we have, may have no solutions. The graphs don't intersect. This is obviously a parabola, so it's a quadratic function, and that's a line, so it's a linear function. This time, we move that over just a little bit. This time, we have a single point of intersection. So the solution to this system is 2 and negative 3. Okay, this time, we have two points of intersection. So we have, well, whatever that is, well, I'd have to guess it. I'm not going to, but I've got two points of intersection, and the calculator would give me both of them. All right, this one has one, two, three points of intersection, so you could say three solutions, but the point of this graph is there is no limit on how many solutions I can have. These graphs could intersect many, many times. This happens to be a um, trigonometry function, which we don't have to get into, but I could have functions where this intersected 5, 7, 20 times. So there's no limit on how many there are. All right, so we're going to go back to the calculator. Use your calculator to find the solutions for the system. Write your answers as ordered pairs. Okay, up here we were just solving for x. We weren't finding a point of intersection so much as a solution. Down here we're finding a point of intersection. It's going to be ordered pairs. All right, this one's already set up to go into y equal, but this one, the way it is, will not. So we've got to solve this one for y. The y's got to be by itself. It's the only way we can do it. So all we've got to do here is subtract 2x from both sides. So on this side, what we're going to put in is y is equal to negative 2x plus 6. So one of our equations is going to be a quadratic in standard form, and it's going to be a parabola, and the other one's going to be a line. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. Okay, and I'm going to clear out both of these. And we are intersecting with each other, so we don't need a 0 and y sub 2, but I do need an x squared minus 3x plus 3. That takes care of that one. We're going to drop down and put in the one that we just solved for y, we've got a negative 2x plus 6. All right, I don't remember what size the graphing window was, but we know we can go back to standard if we need to, and it looks like it's already a standard. All right, so what I'm looking for, I've got two points where they intersect. I've got one there and one there. I've got to find them both. So we're going to do second trace intersect twice. Here's the first time. Okay, I'm down here, so I need to, actually, that's the point of intersection. That's the y-intercept. I was in the wrong place. All right, first curve is right there. All right, so we're going to do some rounding here. So I've got 
one of my solutions, I'm going to round to two decimal places. You know, we're always going to round to two decimal places unless it says something else. Okay, so down here I've got one point. Let's change colors. I don't necessarily want to. Oh, I lost my. Okay, put that back and it's right back where it was. All right, the first solution rounded to is going to be. It's not going to let me do that. Negative one point. I might have to write them down somewhere else and come back. That is just irritating. Okay, negative 1.3. Actually, that would be a 1 if we took it over there. So negative 1.3, and the y is going to be 8.61, because that 5 will take that to a 1. Negative 1.3, and 8.61. Okay, let's go find the other one. And so I'm going to do second trace again. And that's number five. We're going to come down here again. Sorry about that, but that's the y intercept. I don't want to go stop there. I want where the graphs are intersecting. Come around here, and I've got first curve, enter, second curve, enter. And this time I've got 2.34 and 1.32. So 2.34. And 1.32. All right, this time I've got an absolute value and I've got another horizontal line. So let's bring this up again. Go back to y equal and clear it out. And absolute value is under math. And if I arrow over to num, it's option number one. And there's my absolute value sign. So I've got x minus 3. And then I've got to get out of there because that minus 5 is not inside. And then I have a horizontal line where y is equal to 3. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this. And I can see both of those. There's one there and there's one there. So again, second trace, intersect. And I'm going to come up to that one right there. My first one is at negative 1 and 3. Oh, these are easier to write. And the second one There we go, much better. Okay, coming around And enter three times. And this time it's seven and three. So this should be really familiar. We did this chapter four over and over and over again. All right, moving on from here. All right, next page. Now we're getting to the inequalities. I know this is everybody's favorite. So let's review because they're not going to be lines anymore. They're going to be other things. But some of the rules still apply. Okay, nonlinear systems of inequalities contain more than one inequality, and the systems can contain any type of function. You're going to see we've got all kinds down here. <coughs> we still have exactly the same rules. The overlapping shaded region is the solution to the system. So where the shading overlaps is absolutely mandatory. The boundary line is going to be solid for y is greater than or y is or y is greater than or equal to or y is less than or equal to. Same rule. It's going to be dashed for just less than or just greater than. All right. Shading is above for greater than or equal to or greater than, and it's below for less than or equal to or less than. Or if you get really confused, you can pick a test point in each region. Of the point that tests true is the sol is in the solution region. We're going to look at some examples of that. All right, so right here, and this is all about figuring out where the shading is. This is a quadratic. It's a parabola. It's got a dashed line, and that says y is greater than. All right, if you have a vertex right here, I have a vertex here, I have a vertex here. Don't have a vertex here? This one's confusing. It's got two. 
Okay, if you have a vertex, then you find the vertex and you use that to tell you you're above or below. So my vertex is right here. And this is where my shading is going to go because it is above the vertex. All right, this is absolute value and it's less than or equal to. So I've got a solid line. Here's my vertex and it's less than. Let's put a greater random symbol here because that's above. This is less than or equal to and it's below. All right, these work the same. This is an exponential function. You can see that it's increasing along its entire length. And it says y is greater than, that's above. So this would be the greater than part. This is a cubic function, and it has something that can be used as a line. If I went this way, that would be above that function less than or equal to. This is where the below part is. Okay, so let's put it, first we're going to just start out with one inequality and then we're going to do a system. In fact, we're going to do it twice. Okay, this is a single inequality. This is a parabola, so it's a quadratic. The graph of y is less than x squared plus 3x minus 4 is shown at the right. All right, so a couple of conventions that are exactly the same. This is a less than. So the line is going to be dashed. And if you look over there, it's dashed. All right, the shading, because this is a less than, is going to be below. And if you look at the box above, it says, if you have a single vertex, which I do right here, then I'm going to go above or below that vertex. Above this vertex would be greater than. We don't have a greater than, we have a less than. So we have a less than, we're going to shade below. And that's what all of this orange is. Let me do it again. So this is where below is. This is above. All right, now we're going to need to look at the solutions. And it is. Uh, we're going to actually take a test point in a minute. We've got two of them. The solutions are no points on the dashed line. And you, if you've got a solid line and you've got a system, you can have you can have solutions on the solid shared line. But we don't have a system. We've just got one. And any point in the shaded region. So any point here in the orange is a solution. Anything inside here where we haven't shaded is not a solution. So we're going to test something to see if it's not a solution so that we know what that looks like. And I like the origin. It's easy to test. It's 0, 0. So x and y are both 0. So here it is. I've got an x that is 0, and I've got a y that's 0. So I plug those up here into my original equation. The y is 0, x is 0, and if I run that through in my calculator, I get a 0 is less than negative 4. That is not true. That is false. Zero is greater than negative four. So I know, and that just reconfirms that. Like the shading is in the right place because this is not a solution. Now we're going to try this one. So x is negative six and y is negative four. So I put that in for y at negative four and I plug this in for x in both places. Remember, I'm using this equation. Run this through my calculator and I get negative four is less than 14. That is true. And it should be. It's in the shaded region. Okay, so we're going to go through one here that is a system. And we're going to pick a test point where we see where these overlap, because that's the only thing we're going to be interested in. And because I want to shade this so that you can see, I'm going to switch to yellow and probably orange. The graph of the system of inequalities is shown below. We're going to shade the graph. And one of these is 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. And one of these is 2x squared plus 2x minus 2. All right, so which is which, you ask? Well, you're going to put them in your calculator, and you're going to look at them and figure out which one is which. And then from there, we're going to find the shading. All right, so, well, actually, we don't have to. I just like, that was really stupid. That's the y-intercept. Remember that? That's the y-intercept. That's how we're going to figure out who's who. All right, so that's the positive 1. 
So this one is the first one. And there's the negative 2, so this one is the second one. And we are going to do our shading based on where our vertex is. So this says greater than, and greater than says you're going to shade above. So let's go find that one and shade it above. That's this one. Above says I'm going to shade, here's the vertex, and from the vertex I'm going to shade above the vertex. Okay, so I'm going to go pretty carefully because I want to be able to see through this. What happened to that one? Oh. All I want to be able to do is see the overlap, and that's all I care about. So above is above the vertex. All right, this one's got a y-intercept of negative 2, so it's this one. And this one is less than. So this one, let's go ahead and do this one in orange. This one is going to be below. It's less than. All right, here's the vertex. Below the vertex is this way. So this one's going to have a lot of shading. It's going to be all of this. And remember, what I'm interested in is where these graphs are going to have overlapping shading. So I'm shading that to show it, but I'm not think I'm going to be interested in it. In fact, if I have to guess, I think this is where my overlap is going to be. So let's change direction just because it will be clearer when we get up here. But that's where that is. All right, so again, this one was less than. There's the vertex. That is below the vertex. This one was greater than. There's the vertex. That was above the vertex. If you can see it, the overlap shaded region is right there, that little wedge. All right, we're going to find a test point, and we're going to test it in both inequalities and see if we pick the right shaded region. So let's go back to a different color pen and pick a decent point here. Um, let's go ahead and let's see. We've got one zero. That one looks really easy. All right, so I always go for easy points. That's x and that's y, and I have to test it in both of them. So I've got 0 is greater than 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 1. If I run that through my calculator, I'm going to get 0 is greater than negative 1. And that is true. Okay, but we don't, we haven't confirmed it yet because we have to go through both equations. It has to make both of them true. So the next one I'm going to pick, um, well same point, but I'm going to use this one. So again, y is 0, and this time it's less than 2 times, we're in this equation right here, Okay, so I've got 0 is less than this time, and if I run that through my calculator, I am going to get, since I don't have a calculator, actually I do, I'll put one over here. All right, bear with me, I should have done this ahead of time. I got a 2. Okay? So that point in my overlap shaded region, I've got 0 is less than 2. That is also true. So this shaded region is correct. If I put a point from here, I get false on both of them. If I picked a point from here, I would get true on the first one, but false on the second one. And if I picked a point from here, I would get true on the second one, but false on the first one. All right, let's go to the next page. One more example, this one. And there are going to be, I think there are three graphs in the practice section. Let's go over there. Third lunch, orange, grab and go. 
All right, you've got three graphs of the practice section that you are going to have to graph and take pictures and then send them as a Schoology message to your teacher. And uh, let's see if there's another one. These don't have to be, those can all be done in Schoology without sending them. But there is one like the one we just did. You're going to have to take pictures of this one. This is just like the one we just did. All right, let's go back to the example that we just had, though. All right, page back. Here we go. Okay, we're going to graph two parabolas, negative 2x squared plus 8 and negative x squared. So these are both quadratics, and we are going to use our calculator to accurately graph these. Okay, um, and then we're going to put the shading in. But first we're going to make sure we can graph them accurately. We're going to graph them before we do any shading. And they are go both going to be dashed lines. And I did that because I always forget. And then I have to go back and erase. So they're both going to be dashed lines. So what I need are two tables. And the calculator is going to come here. So we're going to put it over here. Okay, so I need a table for, this is A. And I need a table for B. And it says, you can use twin points to find the vertex of the table, and that would be really useful. I definitely don't have to look any farther on x than negative 10 and 10, because that's all that's going to fit. So let's bring up the calculator and take a look. All right, first one, let's go clear this out, is going to be negative 2 x squared plus 8. And all I want to do is look at the table. Well, let's look at the graph. We have an idea. So we know what it's going to look like. We actually know that the y-intercept is right there at 8. So if we actually found that y-intercept, that's going to give us, that's the same as the vertex. That's actually going to save us a lot of time. The vertex is right there, so we need to find um, 0, 8, and that's going to give us twin points on both sides. Great idea. Let's do that. All right, there it is, 0 and 8, and we're going to find twin points. And there they are, 0, 0, 6, and 8, and it looks like we want to go to 3. 3 and negative 10, and 3 and 10. That's perfect. So my calculator is going to disappear, but yours isn't going to. So I'm going to go ahead and put my numbers here. I've got negative 3 and negative 10. And this is going to be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Remember, this was 8. So let's go fill these in. I've got a 0 and a 6. And because these are twin points, twin points have the same y values. They've got different x values. That's what makes that parabola. So this is 0, 6, and negative 10. Let's go ahead and graph that one. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's my vertex. And on this side, uh, actually it looks like I've got, that's an x-intercept, so let's put that in. And it's got a twin point that's right there. And I must have, did I write that? Let's go look at that. No. This should have been a six. I've got them wrong. I've got these backwards. Sorry about that. Let me make mistakes. If you were here in class, the kids will tell you I make mistakes. All right. Put that back to the pen. I have twin points. This is one and six and two and zero. Now I have twin points. Twin points are exactly the same distance across from the axis of symmetry. All right, 1 and 6 is going to be right here. And it's got a twin point right there. And then I've got a 3 and 10 and a negative 3 and 10. See how fast that goes if you know what those are? Okay, now comes the fun part. See what kind of parabola I draw. Not really a very good one. Oh, that looks terrible. All right, I get another shot. After, if I can't do any better than this, then I'll give up. But you know what the shape of the parabola 
those. All right, um, too much stuff left behind. All right, let's try it one more time. Let's turn this sideways. Maybe that will help. Nope. All right, smoothly, smoothly. All right, that's crappy parabola. I'm sorry. This side should be better. No, it's not going to be. This is a joke. A little bit better. Oh, I can't get that any to curve any better than that. One more time. Then I'm giving up. All right, I'm going to trim this down a little bit, too. That's the vertex up there. That's as good as I can do. Sorry, you'll do better than me. All right, the next one, we are going to find a table for that one. So bear with me. We're almost done. This is the last example. This one's just negative x squared. So let's clear this out and put in a negative x squared. This one is going to be a lot easier to draw because the only thing this has is a vertical reflection. I don't even need a table, but I'm going to go ahead and look at it. There's the graph. There's the vertical reflection. So let's go ahead and get the table. And I'm going to do the same thing. I've got a vertex at 0, 0, which I can see. Actually, I want that in the middle. I don't want that there. All right, going back up, I want a negative 3, a negative 2, and a negative 1 here. Because that's my vertex, so I want twin points on each side. And looking back here, let's go back and make sure you can see the, tw the twin points. All right, vertex right there. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. These are x values that are increasing, just like x values do from left to right. And here's the twin points. This is decreasing. Just like this is increasing up one side and it is decreasing down this side. Negative 9, negative 9, negative 4, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1. So negative 9, negative 4, negative 1, and I've got a negative 1, and a negative 4, and a negative and I'm going to change colors, not that I'm going to draw this any better this time, but we'll give it another shot. All right, we're start right here. So my vertex is right here, and I wanted it to be in a different color. All right, uh, negative 1 and negative 1 is right here. And negative 2 and negative 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is where it's going to show up that I graphed it virtually so badly. Do better than I did. And I've got negative 3 and negative 9, which is going to be just barely inside of here. Actually, it's not there. It's right here. So embarrassed at how ugly this graph is. Back to the pen. Okay. I can't promise this is going to be any better, but again, the focus is on the shading. So that's what we're going to do. All right, there's my ugly parabolas. Sorry about that again. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is less than. Less than is going to be shaded below. <coughs> and I'm going to go with my yellow again. And below is going to be below the vertex. So the vertex is right here. And below that vertex is going to be all of this area right here. So very carefully, let's shade that in so that we can see. And already you can tell this part is just not going to be part of that graph. Actually, that part below is part of that. OK, 
everything below that vertex is shaded in. All right, then I have this one is greater than, so it is above. And let's switch to the green for this one. Greater than is above, less than is below. All right, that's this graph. So where am I going? Every place above here. Now, the only place that's going to overlap is going to be right here. And then over here, any place down these little sides, it's going to overlap. But if I were graphing this parabola by itself, Anything that is above would actually include all of this area as well. But that's not where my overlap is, so I'm just putting this in so you can see. All right, so we are going to find two possible solutions. If I picked a solution from out here, the only one that would test positive or true would be this one. If I picked a solution from in here, the only thing that would test true would be this one. So I've got to pick a solution from inside this overlap. And it says two possible solutions, and I've just about marked them all out, but we're going to go back and fix that. Let's go with black. All right, I know I've got a point right there, and I know I've got a point. Let's see. I could stay on that, but I probably should move up a little bit. Let's try negative 1 and negative 1. Excuse me, negative 1 and positive 1, which is right here. The negative 1 and negative 1 would work as well. But anything in this region, so any of those y-intercepts along there, and that one as well. So let's go ahead and write those out. I've got a 0 and a 1. I could have a 0 and a 2, a 0, 3, anything that goes up to 8. And I've got a negative 1 and 1, which I actually marked on the wrong side. Negative 1 and 1 would have been right to there, but that one works too. All right, for the top one, what is the vertex? The vertex was the same as the y-intercept, and I've got a table that confirms that, that the vertex was right there because there's my twin points on either side where it is increasing. It hits the vertex and then it decreases, so it is 0, 8. This is the review part of the program. The y-intercept was exactly the same. It was also 0, 8. And I've got two x-intercepts. Unfortunately, they're in the table. X-intercepts have y values of 0. So right there and right there. I've got a negative 2 and a 0. And a 2 and a 0. All right, so you know what you've got to do. The first set of exercises you're going to do what we did in example Third one. Lunch, blue diamond. These are you're not you're gonna look for a point of intersection, but this side's gonna go on y equal, this side's gonna go on y equal, and you're just solving for x. So that's the first example we learned. Okay, then you've got systems that are not inequalities, so you're just going to find the points of intersection. And I'm trying to scroll in the wrong place, that's why it's not working. Those are these questions. The next page. All right, this is, you're going to determine what is a solution, and the solutions could be anywhere in the overlap region or any shared solid line. There is no shared solid line here. So all you've got to do is look for those points. This has a shared solid line, and that's the overlap. And this has a shared solid line, and there's the overlap. So that's what you're doing there. And these are testing each point. So just like we did in, um, well, we did it in a couple of places. You're going to plug these into both equations and see which ones make it true. And there may be more than one answer for all of these, so don't assume there's one. All right, so that was lesson 10.5, nonlinear systems. Please make sure that you do the practice and enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out.